little question here is how many of you use social media? How many of you do not? How many of you wish it would go away? <laughs> that. There we go. All right. I always got to ask that question. We'll talk today about some strategies about maybe what social media might be able to help your business. Really, the thing that's happening with social media is we have to forget about the technology. If we can dissolve what it takes to actually manipulate the social media, really what we're getting at is a relationship. Hope it's going to be very interesting for you. So I brought the most interesting man in the world with me to be able to tell you what this overview is about. So evolution of business marketing, the state of social media, developing a social media strategy, and social media best practices. So let's go forward. First, I want to give you a little story, a fishtail. There just happened to have been, at one time, two fish that were swimming along. And these two fish were friends. And until one point, they came across an older, more mature fish, who said to the two young fish, How's the water, boys? The two fish kind of ignored and kept swimming on. Two fish eventually looked at each other and said, what the hell is water? <laughs> Social media is a lot like water, if you think about it for a fish. It's all around us. We can't escape it. It is a part of our existence in a very short period of time that it's been around. So how we go forward when we swim around in that water is maybe a little bit about what we're here for today. So let's talk about the evolution of business marketing. Well, the very beginning of it, talking about cavemen, marketing. Businesses start back in the caveman days. I'll trade you uh, a tusk for a bone or something else, whatever it might be. So we have word of mouth type of marketing. This is when business really started. And you know, you always do business with people you know, like, and trust. It's social and intimate. That's what the word of mouth is. It's intimacy. It's somebody that you know. So that would be something like a chamber of commerce. That would be something like this network meeting that Marie does every month. The next in the evolution of business marketing was the written. Okay, the pen and the quill, being able to write maybe on a stone tablet. And eventually, it evolved over many, many, many thousands and millions of years, perhaps, into the Yellow Pages and the Gutenberg Bible, which is on the left. First time that printing was allowed, it spread like wildfire. It was a revolution. So what happened with that is marketing became a little bit more unknown who was writing that because we have something that you can write on, a mechanism. You have now, with that, a trusted authority that people put in their things that they read. After that, many thousands of years later, you know, maybe only about 100 years or so, we went into the electronic piece of business marketing. TV and radio, we're talking about mass market, exposure and branding. We all have a product or a service that we want to get out and be able to market our services. As we move along to the internet, which started back in the, about the 1980s, 1990s, things changed very rapidly once again. People were connecting in a very unique way, but it was still non-engaging. It was one-sided. An email, not very engaging. Anybody want to read all their emails that they get every day? OK, that's not, that's not our favorite thing that we want to do. OK, it's not very engaging at all. It's very one-sided. Then we moved into social media, which has really just started about seven, eight years ago. So how marketing has gone into seven or eight years in the history of the evolution of marketing, it's, it's a phenomenon. It truly is a phenomenon. And we're left to deal with it and pick up the pieces and make some sense of it. So with the evolution of business marketing, we've really come full circle. We have now, again, networking with people that we know, like, and trust. And that is the power of social media, is that people will respond to people that they know, like, and trust virtual friends, social channels. The authenticity and the transparency of what social media can do speaks. And does anybody know what's on over on the right right here? Johnny bit my finger. Bit my finger. Yeah. You believe that? It has 533 million views on YouTube. 
<laughs> is that powerful? Can you get in front of that many people in a Super Bowl ad and pay $10 million for 30 seconds of whatever it costs? It's incredible. Or how about Gagnum style? Present views, just checked this yesterday, is 1 million, 1 billion, 720 million. Almost 2 billion views on YouTube. What's the power of that? And is advertising dead? Does anybody think advertising is dead? Or it's changed a little bit, perhaps? Okay. So the evolution of business marketing, we can't forget also mobile. Okay, everybody's probably in their pocket has a cell phone that does amazing things. It's always connected. It is always on. It's probably the first thing you touch in the morning. It's probably the last thing you touch when you go to bed at night. And it's typically no more, more, more than about one or two feet away from a bo person's body all day long. Does anybody know what O3B is? This is looking into the future right here. And this it's going on right now. Anybody know what O3B is? This is going to blow your mind. Okay, this is the future, and it, it is already started. It stands for Other 3 Billion. And it is a company that is launching multitudes of satellites to have a constellation of satellites that will deliver broadband internet to emerging markets on cell phones. Okay, we have South America. Africa, India, Australia, the whole southern hemisphere is going to have amazing things happen within the next few months to a year because the first satellites have already gone up about a month or two ago. What this will do will again revolutionize business marketing and who potential customers are because we're getting connected. The whole world is now going to be entirely connected. So advertising replaced by social media, there's a value question here. With the use of social media, the question is, why should I care? If you have a product or you have a service, why should I care about that? Because you don't influence me. Somebody else does, my friends and my core community and if I choose to reach into another community, that will influence me, my friends. So those friends have more importance than what you see on TV, if you still watch it, or what you hear on the radio, if you still listen to it, with all the different choices that we have. Cable TV, how many channels are out there? Satellite radio, how many channels are out there? The difference with this is that when you have content that you would produce, and there's social engagement with that. Sales can be converted from that. And the cycle will continue with that if you get on that path of being able to produce content and market yourselves in this new way with the internet and with social media. So the most interesting man in the world has turned into the most influential man of the world in the world. I don't influence people very often, but when I do, I'm the most influential man in the world. So the influencer can have friends, and those friends can be advocates. That would be a perfect world to have somebody else advocating for what you do with your products or your services. But how do you reach those influ influencers? Well, let's look at real quickly at the state of social media, the, the four or five channels here. Facebook. Of all the internet users, 100% of the internet users on Earth, 67% of them are on Facebook. Active users monthly is 1.06 billion people get on Facebook every day, and just about half of them get on there within 48 hours. YouTube, 62% of internet users use YouTube more than one billion people use it actively every month. Now here's an interesting stat. 75% of ad agency executives in a recent study have stated that online videos are more effective than TV advertising. So where do you put your marketing money? Where do you advertise? How do you market yourself? LinkedIn, 
16% of all internet users are on LinkedIn. How many people in here are on LinkedIn? Okay. How many people are in here on Facebook? Okay. I know you've all watched the YouTube then, if you have. Twitter. How many people are on Twitter? 16% of all internet users are on Twitter. 200 million people on Twitter and growing, all of them. Pinterest. Anybody on, anybody on Pinterest? Very nice. Wait, wait, wait. Raise it up. Raise it up. Who's it? <laughs> Look at that. All females. Any men? Any men? Uh, ah, Todd's on. All right. All right. Pinterest, if you've got female, you know, potential clients, if you're not on Pinterest, that is something that might be great for you. 25 million and growing. The fastest social media network that's out there right now. So why use social media? I asked you that before. Does anybody remember what is the number one reason for using social media? Connecting with people, okay? It's relationships, yes. To build a relationship with your customers and your future potential customers. Okay, why? It's because people do business with who they know, like, and trust. You probably know that, and they've been doing that since the caveman. Again, the cycle has come back to a very personal way of marketing. So, few benefits of social media for business. Build customer relationships, we know that. Branding of company, products and services. Lead generation, we're gonna come back and talk about lead generation. Does anybody do lead generation on social media right now? Two hands, that's it? Three? What channels do you use? Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Same? Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. You use lead generation? On any social media channel? Okay. Facebook, okay, good. Okay, lead generation. Let's look at this really quickly. The dark line is the percentage reporting below average cost per lead for a channel. So social media is the highest. It is the greatest bang for your buck right here. Okay, this uh, brown area is percentage saying channel delivers above average sales conversions. It's just about the highest. What's really interesting about in here, the opposite, if you look at traditional advertising, there's nothing there. What value does it provide anymore? It's newspapers, it's TV ads, radio ads, all that traditional media. So the fourth thing is customer service and credibility. Five, community exposure. And it could be a virtual community, it could be a personal, in-person community that you are a part of. Competitive edge. If your customers are using it and you're not, you've lost your competitive edge. Market intelligence. What are your customers saying about you? Do you want to know? You should want to know. And how you respond to them is being social. Eight target marketing campaigns. You can go out and you can get leads and you can do different things to help build your business. Increase traffic to your website. Well, why is that important? Okay, if you look at social media as the place where you want your customers to go and stay, then you've got a problem. Okay, because Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn could turn you off at any time for whatever reason. It could happen, and it has happened. So your website is still a very valuable piece of real estate that you should never let go, and people that say that the website will, one day you won't need it, right now, you definitely need it. You have to drive people to your website. And number 10, increase in new business. And notice that I put that last there, increase in new business. If you're just on Facebook or Twitter or any of those things, and you're expecting to get business just because you're, you made a company page, then you're not playing by the rules. You're not dealing with people that know, like, and trust you yet. You're not engaging just by having that. So building a business on social media, it takes time and it takes effort and it takes a strategy. Lead generation. Let me show you some things about lead generation. We had three people here that use Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn for lead generation. Maybe some of you do and you don't realize it. Social media for lead generation. I think this might blow your mind. I don't know how many of you have seen this or not. But Facebook targeting, how many people knew that you could target people with what's called choose your audience and place ads? You know that? 
How many people didn't know that you can place ads on Facebook? OK. All right, so you have direct access to advertise to 1.2 billion people on this earth in a very, very targeted, with a scalpel, way of connecting with them. This is a screenshot that I took from the Choose Your Audience. Okay, if you have a uh, page, a business page, I have the United States selected here. I have age 13 to, to no max. And in the United States, there's 180 million people that I have access to. If I select some things, some categories, I have location. I have age, gender, practice, precise interest, broad categories. But now if I choose, a city and I typed in Chicago and I include 25 miles and if I put the age 35 to 45 and if I choose only men and if I in a broad category hit small business owners which I know some of you might be interested in as far as another client there are now 17,800 people that I can directly put an ad in front of it took me 10 seconds or less to put those clicks in there. Is that valuable? Okay. LinkedIn targeting, same thing with LinkedIn. They have very precise mechanisms to be able to place an ad there. I won't go through that. All right, so the state of business to business, social media 2003. This is the business study. Describe your social strategy. 1% don't have a social strategy. 38% have a defined social strategy. And 61% have an ad hoc or undefined social strategy. It's kind of shocking. Top three objectives that they have is to drive traffic to a website, build brand and positioning, and strengthen thought leadership. <coughs> Degree to which people can calculate their return on their investment with using social media. 44% rarely or not, or rarely or not at all. 9% don't know the return on their investment. 9% most of the time know it. 7% half of the time. 30% some of the time. And 1%, only 1% completely know the return on their investment in using social media and the time and the money that's spent on it. Business to business social media cycle. If no defined strategy because they don't see a lot of return on investment, it kind of falls apart. But on the opposite end, by not seeing a return on investment because they don't have a defined strategy for social media. It, it's kind of a yin and the yang. It's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Is a strategy important, or is it just having a return on investment? Well, it's both. It's like a New Year's resolution. Everybody makes one, but a lot of people give it up. Social media strategy philosophy, OK? In, in, Conducting a strategy for yourself, a new philosophy for marketing is what you have to look at. It's defined by a vision, a purpose, and a value. What gets planned or implemented and measured will happen. Give it the time and energy that it deserves. Sales matter, but engagement matters more. Ability to determine return on investment. Valued and informed content. A shift in focus to listening to customers. And it's not about technology anymore. Again, it's about relationships. So maintenance versus campaign. Social media maintenance is the art of maintaining a dynamic and interesting social presence, posting various types of content, recurring tasks. No start or finish to that. It's kind of mundane things that you, you do. A social media campaign has a goal, on the other hand, and it has to be judged with a success or failure to, by that goal. It has a start and a finish. What we really need is to have both of these, is you need to have a maintenance, a regular maintenance and maintaining it on a regular basis, and you need to have campaigns, and you need to have them both working together. So four steps to helping design a social media strategy. Number one is to set goals, make a commitment. You have to invest in time, energy, and resources. Create and understand specific goals. This is a little bit, about, a little bit like creating a business plan. 
You have to create a plan and a strategy for social media if you want to be successful there. An example would be sales, increase in sales, branding, build database, thought leadership. You also need to create and implement objectives. How are you going to get there? What steps are you going to do to be able to achieve your social media? And develop a company social media business mindset. Establish a content strategy. Just because you have a social media channel, a Facebook fan page or a LinkedIn uh, page, and you don't post anything on there, nobody's coming to you. Determine effective social media channels. Is Facebook good for you? Or is LinkedIn? Or is all of them? Is a YouTube channel good for you? Establish metrics that are defined by your objectives. You have to be able to measure and know where you're going. At a time, you need to set a time, maybe 90 days, whatever it might be. You have to have a campaign time. The second step is to execute your plan and engage. Optimize social channels. Content is king. Content is what you put out there. It's not just a video, it's not just a uh, text. It's also responding and listening to somebody's comments. If your customers are appreciated, you're listening to them, okay, and you're responding to them. Target Facebook, we looked at that before as far as getting ads, and it is the number one most effective ROI strategy is to place an ad. Number three, listen externally and internally. Respond to comments, build relationships, and build community, customers, and their needs. Internally, measure and know where you are. What kind of analytics might you have? And four is evaluate. Review your progress. Did you reach your goals? Analytics, if you don't measure, you'll never go anywhere. What worked, what didn't, why should, what should you do differently, and determining your return on investment. So the best practices is just start. M many of you already have, and if there's something more that you need to do, maybe you want to, as a company, practice using social media internally before you start using it with your clients to get a mindset for your company. Create a only page for Facebook or LinkedIn internally for your company and get everybody on your team with the mindset that social media is how you communicate. Social media is a journey. It's the last words of a philosophy I can say there and the point of a journey is not to return. So where that fish winds up and they realize that they're in the water and that there's another world out there, it's a lot what social media is like. Was this valuable for you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.